Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. This is David Lab of On David's Brain, and I'll give you just one little itty bitty guess as to what my favorite, one of my favorite video game franchises of all time is. Uh, yeah, spoilers. Bioshock. Yep, I got the Bioshock HD collection for my uh, for Christmas, and guess what year I'm deciding to go and do a let's play of all three games and their DLC for its tenth year anniversary. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's do this. Bioshock 1 Remastered. Let's do this. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I... Yeah, originally I wasn't going to get this, but, well, you can only resist your favorite game being remastered for, uh, uh, for a new console and being able to actually record your gameplay for it for so long. That takes me back. You know, uh, I actually first heard... I, yeah, let me tell you how I came across this game. Uh, okay, that happened. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, I came across this game when I was watching Let's Play on G4 back in the day before it was just nothing but endless repeats of cops. And yeah, I saw them, I saw them showcase Bioshock for the Xbox 360. And I was like, oh my god, that looks fucking awesome! Uh, but I was in high school, and I, well, I never had, and I never will get myself an Xbox console, because, well, again, I'm a PS3, I'm a Sony guy. Ooh, the challenge rooms. Ooh, well, uh, <laughs> we'll definitely be taking a look at those some other time. Director's commentary throughout the game. Oh, and the Museum of Broken, um... The museum. Sure, the boys in Ryan's lab can make it hack-proof, but that don't mean we ain't gonna hack it. Oh yes, I heard about the. Welcome to the Museum of Warford Concepts, a guided tour of ideas that are rational games discarded or reworked heavily during the making of the original Bioshock. Ooh, hello. Ooh, not exactly a whole lot to interact with, but, yeah, let's take a look. And let's see, the forest concept art. Ooh, pretty. There we go. No plasmids? Okay. Oh, look at these suckers. Ah, the sea slugs. The gatherer. Very hard to imagine this creature, whose job was to reclaim animal corpses around Rapture, was the earliest iteration of the idea behind the little sister. Since the gatherer generated absolutely no sympathy for players, duh. Let's see. Uh, the team experimented with concepts for featuring a number of animals, including the infamous dog in the wheelchair, and later a grotesque miniature humanoid. Finally, the concepts, uh, a concept sketch of a deformed, uh, deformed child inspired the, uh, let's see, the Eureka moment responsible for the Little Sisters. Yeah, if we took a look at these things, there would be. And yeah, look, I'm stepping on it right now. Do 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 do. do. Oh, the way. There'll be whales here! Not as much of a cut concept as an easter egg for the observant museum visitors. These sea creatures can be seen swimming past the player's view during the bathysphere ride down. <laughs> well, spoilers! And yeah, I remember they re-released the Orphan Con- on uh, the Museum of Orphan Concepts for the PS3 re-release bundle of Bioshocks, uh, Bioshock 1 and 2. I didn't get that because, well, I already had Bioshock 1 and 2 on the PS3. But, yeah, for the PS4, completely remastered? Yeah, of course I'm gonna get it. Ah, uh, the Rumbler. Or, yeah, the Slowpro. Irrational's, uh, Irrational's internal name for this prototype Big Daddy variant, who mauled players with an enormous hook and fire uh, bearings from a barrel, stood for Slow Projectile Fucked Up Melee. Uh, let's see, Slow Pro Fun. Uh, slow Projectile Slash Fucked Up Melee. <laughs> 
He survived long enough to become a fully functional AI, but the team eventually cut him to focus on polishing the other big daddy types. This model later appeared in Bioshock 2 as the Rumbler, uh, throwing miniature turrets instead of cannonballs. Mm, yeah, it definitely works a lot better aesthetically for Bioshock 2. And, and, look, and in Bioshock 2, it looks a lot more cobbled together, definitely something that Lamb and her goons would have cooked up on a tighter budget. And yeah, cannonballs. Really? Right. Oh, this uh, the proto bouncer. But the early bouncer. This original model for the bouncer type of Big Daddy featured a flat-headed drill at the end of each arm. The Big Daddies were envisioned as the builders of Rapture, with weapons modified from tools they would have used in its construction. When the gatherers were reimagined as little sisters, one of the bouncer's drill was changed into a gloved hand so the two characters could interact with each other. Uh, I, I might know drills. I, I, I might not know a whole lot about drills, but that does not look like a drill to me. That just looks more like some sort of sonic weapon or, or, or some, well, a rumbling type of weapon or something like that. Something, something that would probably be used for, you know, like, uh, delivering incredibly heavy force to, like, uh, hardened sea, uh, hardened sea floor or something like that, but, hmm. Huh. Well, I definitely noticed the whale, but the the lamp on uh, the uh, lamprey eel, or, wait, yeah, the lanternfish, and yeah, I'm not a marine biologist, okay? So uh, if I get a couple of those names wrong, well, that's just me. Ooh, I remember this. Let's see. The big daddies, originally called protectors, were envisioned as dive uh, dive suited construction workers retasked with the defense of atom gatherers. They use construction tools or improvised weapons that look like they've been found on the sea floor. Let's see, from left to right are early concepts for the melee range and slow projectile. Hmm. Yeah, definitely not as cool as the Big Daddy, uh, as the Big Daddy Slayer came out to be. To be perfectly honest, they just kind of look like Scooby-Doo, uh, look like monsters you'd see in Scooby-Doo. Hmm. Yeah, I remember uh, this... Oh, what the hell is this thing? Oh, I know what it is. Ugly. Oh, it looks like some prototype splicer. Let's see. The Grenader Splicer. This great elephantine splicer was an early Grenader uh, from the same period of development as Stitchy and Hooker. He was a guy who spliced to carry around giant grenades and throw them at you, says lead artist Sean Robertson. Uh, the model was built in texture, but never animated. Yeah, why would anyone splice themselves just to throw grenades? I mean, this guy looks pretty... Uh, this guy looks grotesque and uh, grotesque and whatnot, but... Uh, I don't know, maybe they could have just like reused him for like a boss or something like that. I mean... This guy definitely looks more like uh, like, uh, uh, like a boss character that you'd see. You know, not just like a common enemy. But then again, people said the same thing about the Brutes or something like that, so... <laughs> Let's see. Oh, this is a little demo area. Uh, ooh. Let's see. The concept art for Neptune's Bounty. Let's see. Let's see, but the bodies flowing in the ocean were cut late in development when their cast shadows proved too distracting from the action in the room. Okay. Oh. Huh, another possible boss. Huh. I guess it was like a prototype spider splicer. Hooker. Created around the same time as Stitchy and Grenader, the splicer was dubbed the Hooker because of her weapon of choice. This concept evolved into the Spider Splicer when it was decided that Spider Splicers could fill in any behavior role, and the Hooker model later became the Baby Jane Splicer. <clears throat> That's a woman? Well, again, they pro if it were me, I probably would have just saved this for like an exclusive for a boss or something like that. Yeah, you know, maybe modify it a little bit, give it, uh, give it like I don't know, like. Uh, a black coat, or yeah, maybe this could be like the uh, what they could have used for Simon Wales' uh, character model in Bioshock 2 instead of just like a generic spider splicer. Eh. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. And 
Ooh. The Evolution of the Rosie. Rifleman. And mm. Early Splicer concept art. Moving from grotesque to humor was a slow process. While early concepts saw the melee enemies grew monstrous arms, the team had trouble conveying how someone who had spliced to become a marksman would appear. Huh. Let's see. Oh. Uh, these are early concepts for the rosy type of Big Daddy, who, like the bouncer, was envisioned as a construction worker who had been repurposed as a protector, a protector for the gatherers. Hmm. And again, yet another possible boss they could have... <sighs> eh, maybe not this one, though. It's kind of a bit generic, and... It honestly reminds me of, the, uh, of those two, uh, of, of those two conjoined twins that separate, of those two conjoined twin thugs in Batman Arkham City. Uh, you know the ones we're talking about, the ones that were working for the Joker and the Penguin. Uh, I forget their names exactly, but, yeah, Stitchy. The first Splicer that Irrational created for Bioshock. Stitchy was used in er many early game concept demos, and it was a fully functional in-game with kin uh, kinematics, hit reactions, and voiceover. It took us that long to realize he wasn't a good model. This is probably the worst abortion that Irrational has ever made. Agreed. It's just a giant lump of... And honestly, it just kind of looks more, uh, more at home in Resident Evil than it does Bioshock. Uh, I mean, it looks deformed and whatnot, but... Well, at least it has pants and... Uh, pants and a shotgun and... Huh. Anyways, let's see. These are some of the first concept sketches to show Bioshock's enemies moving in a more human-like direction. Artists couple that approach with the idea that Adam deformed the body in a way that related to its intended function. For instance, the giant grotesque arm on a melee enemy. Hmm. Ooh, creepy. Oh, uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I could definitely see this as a, let's see, pre-yam hand. Before solidifying the function around Adam, Irrational experimented with the idea of it being an external injected substance. Here you can see us playing around with Adam being mechanically injected, said ad, uh, uh, lead artist Sean Robertson. So Splicer's got vials of it in his belt. Uh, this model was created, but it never made it into the game in any form. Hmm... I don't know if how Adam is later explained. Mm, well, I don't know. Maybe this guy, fi uh, maybe the in-game story could have been that this guy figured that constantly injecting himself new, with new Adam would keep uh, would keep the uh, the effects of it from uh, from taking place and deteriorating his mind and body. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, well, I mean, yeah, the slow pro, yeah, being reworked in the rumbler. I mean, yeah, like sometimes. Uh, concepts to just uh, stay where they are on the cutting room floor, but sometimes you, it's just, I don't know, it's just the right time and place for people, I don't know. Let's see, the Fleet, uh, welcome to the Fleet Hall. This early concept for Sandra Cohen's Fleet Hall was designed after level building had begun. And when the designers found they were having difficulty conceptualizing the theater space, it was one of the earliest spaces built for Bioshock, and many of the assets used in this museum came from that area. Oh. So this whole area here was originally intended for the Fleet Hall? Huh. Alright. Well, I mean, you know, uh, considering what happened later with the Fleet Hall, that was definitely the right call. Ooh, made a rhyme. <laughs> Let's see. Iconic Rapture Concepts. This is the first image that really captured all the visual elements that made Bioshock Bioshock. A large view of the ocean the aquatic lighting scene, and the elegant art deco design elements. Without this image, Bioshock would have been a radically different beast. Yeah, apparently it was originally going to be like be on a space station or something, or uh, uh, run by some some sort of uh, some gene-splicing cult or something like that. I, I, I don't really remember. But yeah, 
spiritual successor to System Shock 2, or just modern day, uh, yeah, re uh, never mind. Hmm, huh. I don't know, just, this one looks a little bit too, uh, a little too much for the first game, I guess. Yam Hand. This character, decided, uh, derisively called Yam Hand around Irrational Games, was the poster child of the conceptual phase that preceded the decision to go with human enemies. I point out the drawings behind the model, uh, uh says uh, artist Sean Robertson. You can see the top one, let's see. Let's see, the uh, the top one got built, but the other two informed the design as well. As we tend uh, more towards humanoids, the Scooby monsters got goofier and less scary. <laughs> As we trended more towards humanoids, the Scooby monsters got goofier and less scary. Oh my god. Oh god, I, I, I said it! They look like freaking Scooby-Doo monsters! <laughs> wow. Oh, coincidence. This is one of several paintings that try to portray the most important elements of Rapture at once. These images will help define the ruined art, art, underwater art deco aesthetic and that and the team was trying to capture. <laughs> if only I could see it all the way, you friggin' mooks. Hmm. Again, something that looks more at home in Resident Evil or Silent Hill than it does Bioshock. These were from some of the earliest pieces done for Bioshock, uh, back from when Irrational was still working on Swap 4. Uh, the only concrete ideas at that point were an undersea city and biological experimentation, so early concepts focused on those themes. Oh yeah, Swap 4. You need to move. You need to move, sir. Sir, you're in the way. I need you to move, sir. You're in my way, sir. Alright, you're in my way, sir. Ah! I'm not in your... Reynolds, I swear to God! Oh, now why didn't this make it in? This looks cool! Oh. I, I, again, I saved, I probably could have at least saved it for Bioshock 2, where the uh, where the splicers definitely look much more monstrous and less human. Yeah. But, well, say la vie. Oh, no, what is... Is this like a robot? Let's see, early Big Daddy concept art. This was the fourth protector concept, originally created with an organic slug attached to it. A model was started, but never completed as the team narrowed their focus to three and finally just two Big Daddy types. I still like this as a protector, says artist Rob Waters. And we started modeling and I really pushed to get it in, even as just a static model on the floor, but it never made it. Eh... I don't. Mm. Well, yeah, I guess. Qu yeah, the moral of the story, kids: quality over quantity. Plain and simple. Now, who is? Huh. Now, who is this tall drink of water? Let's see, the missing link model. This character is essentially the missing link between the grotesque early designs and the human splicers that appeared in Bioshock. This is the last bad model that we did before moving on to what actually went into the shipping game. After playing with him for a while, we just thought, why don't we use humans instead? I always saw these as Scooby-Doo monsters because they were too inhuman to evoke empathy. I, I swear to, I, I swear to every, uh, every possible entity you could worship, I did not go through this concept, uh, I did not go through this mode before, uh, before, uh, before showing it to you guys. I just... <laughs> I mean, wow, that was just, that is just, what can I say? Great minds think alike. This is a concept sketch depicting what will later become Submarine Bay, an area which has an important scene for Atlas. Hmm, okay. Ooh, hello. Let's see, this is an early concept depicting a Big Daddy bursting through a wall, which inspired the audio log of the Big Daddy training grounds about a rogue Big Daddy. The player then encountered him at the end of the level. Oh yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we are just walking through the uh, through the training grounds, and then the big guy just bursts on through like he was the freaking Kool Aid Man. Huh. So yeah, 
interesting ideas and well oh yeah back to my or what i was going to say about this missing link thing well i don't know maybe if they just like shrunk him down and uh, maybe uh, uh yeah maybe they just shrunk him down and give him some hair maybe they could at least use this guy as the model for peach wilkins i mean yeah just give pete uh, all right i mean we're gonna go through bio the uh, the actual bioshock game in just a little bit but suffice to say yeah, the, the original character models for the first game are, well, definitely sparse, to say the least. Dr. Steinman at least had himself a, somewhat of a unique doctor model, but there was really no difference between him and the other uh, and the other uh, doctor enemies. And yeah, the only ones with original models I could think I could remember off the top of my head are, well, Cohen, uh, uh, Cohen and Ryan. I mean, I get that Ryan is a central character, but why Cohen? I mean, we only see him like once or twice. Uh, I mean, for the characters that we only see like at least um, once or twice or incredibly pivotal characters, I could get why giving them their own unique models would be important. But uh, I don't know. I or, you know, at least just give an original character model for Tenenbaum. I mean, for anyone who's uh, actually picked up the uh, Bioshock uh, 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 Bioshock strategy guide, there was there was an original concept model for Tenenbaum. I mean, why didn't they give that to her? I mean, just, I mean, she is a pivotal character. We've seen her, we see her twice. I don't know. I mean, at least they did the decent thing and gave her her own unique model in Bioshock 2. Uh, where... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Bioshock 2 at least managed to improve on the first game a little bit by giving more unique character models. Uh, yeah, for Grace, Stanley, uh, Sinclair, Tenenbaum, uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, Lamb, Eleanor, and oh, yeah, definitely Alexander. But yeah, Bioshock 2 is another topic for another day. Hmm. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was a good thing that they included this in the HD collection too. It, it's always it's it's always kind of fun to go and see what uh, what did and didn't make onto the cutting room floor. Mm. Yeah, this was just no. It's a giant lump of potatoes. Let's see. This could have been made something for like a unique boss. This could definitely have been used for unique boss. And. I, Again, Simon Wales, potentially Peach Wilkins, and this, yeah, no. It, it just looks like, uh, it, lo it looks like if the Scarecrow joined Davy Jones' crew with Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Oh, well, enough of my artistic critiques. Uh, tune in next time where we'll finally get started on our Let's Play of the original Bioshock on Survivor. And I'm going to try and get all the trophies on a straight through playthrough, which means I'm going to be got, I'm going to be saving all the little sisters, getting all the gene tonics, you name it. And, oh yes, and of course, going through survivor mode without the via chambers. I did it before. I can sure as hell do it again. This is David Lab of On David's Brain. Be sure to like, share, and of course subscribe. And, be, and if you want to, be sure to donate to my Patreon. Bye.